I've hardly shot any moving water, it's never really been my thing, but I thought I'll give it a go this time, see what I can do with it. So I'm going to see if I can pluck out something kind of like what I did with that shot of the dead branches in that dam a little while ago. See if I can get some water movement and something static in the foreground. So this is awfully convenient. I'm parked literally 10 meters away from the, uh, from the water. And I'm gonna see what I can pluck out with my lovely little stumpy, the RF 70-200 F4. Love this little lens, such a beautiful little thing. Do I need anything else? Nope, I reckon that'll do it. All right. All right, so after last night's rains, we had pretty heavy rains actually for the last 24 hours. I've got a ton of water coming down this little stream here, which would normally be dry. So it's not particularly attractive or anything like that, but there's plenty of movement and there's some interesting... Oh, here we go, we've got some sun now. There are a couple of trees there in the middle of the stream, which I can sort of freeze with the water going around them. So I'm just gonna experiment a bit and see what I come up with. Like I said, I hardly ever shoot water or moving water anyway, so this is sort of an experiment for me. Now one thing I am going to have to do, because it's a fairly bright day, is put on uh, ND and polarizer to get that uh, shutter speed down, so I'll grab those out of the car. I tell you, this freewell system here is brilliant. It's so simple, you just chuck the whole thing in a car like this, in your bag. I've got basically lens cap, CPL, polarizer. Under that is the uh, 10 stop ND, and below that is an adapter ring for my 100 to 400. And this, and uh, the one that I'm filming with here, the new 24 to 105, 4 to 7.1 RF lens for my R6. All right, so I'm gonna try the, uh, the 10 stop first, and if that's not enough, then I'll put on the uh, CPL, the polarizer. <sighs> but I think this <sighs> will be enough. Let me get you off. One second, F11, 1600 ISO, right? So I'm, I want to go down a bit lower. I'm going to go down to F8, ISO 800. All right, let's see what we can get with that. So I've got water rushing over the rocks here. We've got a few fixed elements like rocks, some lush grass on the side. But what I'm interested in is stuff like this. These two, although well, they're a bit skinny, maybe this fella here, or more particularly, this fella here. Two seconds. I'm gonna get lots of movement in these leaves because it's pretty breezy. Uh, so two seconds, F8, 400 ISO. Actually, they can go about F9, F10. It's funny, you just don't realize how interesting something can look after you do a long exposure. You can't really picture it until you actually see it. It's kind of cool. I should do more of these. I'm gonna try these two trees here. Again, two seconds, F10, 400 ISO. I'm just learning, I've just got myself an, F, uh, an R6, so I'm just learning how to control it while I'm filming. But so far, I love it. I'm gonna zoom in on those two little saplings, put them to the right third of my frame. Long exposure. Actually, I might bump this down to, drop this down to 200 ISO. Go for two seconds at F11. All right, let's give that a go. See, this is half the fun of photography. It's just, you just stuff around and experiment. 
you don't go in with some preconceived plan of what you get, well, you can, but I find that when you go in with no plan, you just wander around, just look and just experiment like a kid. That's when you get your best photos. And even if you don't get your best photos, that's when you enjoy it most. It's not a project, a task, a job. It's just exploration, which is always fun. I think I actually like it to be around about a sixth of a second, so you still get some of that texture in the water. So I'm gonna go up to 800 ISO, F10, no, F9, sixth of a second F9, 800 ISO. Let's see what that looks like. I think that this is gonna be better. Yeah. Yeah, I think the water looks better. Because if you do it really much longer than half a second, then you start to just get milkiness, which is fine for some shots, but when you've got kind of angry, turbulent water, it's nice to get some definition in the streaks of the water rather than just milkiness. Yeah, that, that yields a lot more texture in the water. And those saplings are pretty sharp down the bottom. I don't mind if there's a bit of movement up the top of them. That's okay. Part of the joys of landscape photography, I was gonna go down here and get closer to my subject and I slid ass over tit down there and dropped both cameras. Luckily, I don't think anything's stuffed. That's okay, that's just a bit scuffed and dirty. Nothing broken, that's good. And my new R6, what do I do to that? Just a bit of scuffing here. <laughs> it's funny, when you fall off a motorbike, you always try and save the bike. And, <laughs> now this looks okay. And uh, it's the same with cameras. When I slid down here, the first thing I did was uh, try to save the camera. So <laughs> my ass took the brunt of it. So I've got a nice muddy asshole. <laughs> so I slid there. Not sure where my ass landed, but I can feel that it's all wet <laughs> and muddy. <laughs> oh well. Okay, so I'm not real keen now on <laughs> going back down there. I think I will take that as a, as a suggestion <laughs> not to go down there. Have I got a dirty ass? I'm sure I have. Don't know if you can see it or not. It feels very wet. It feels uncomfortable. So this is what it feels like when you get to 95, I suppose. That constant sense of foreboding that something moist and unpleasant has gathered in your underwear. Ah, oh, there we go. This is Stumpy's first fall. And he's come up triumphant. No damage. L bracket took the brunt of it, which is good. Oh, I've scratched my lovely tripod. I'm not one of these people who likes to have well-worn gear, you know, to try and prove that I've been around the world with it and conquered the Amazon and all that sort of stuff. No, I'm not like that. I like to keep my gear in good condition. And that's not because I might want to sell it one day. I do, I do sell gear from time to time or I give it away. So I like to keep it in good condition, but I like to, I figure that if you look after your gear, your gear looks after you. And so I like to look after it. You know, even my four-wheel drive, I love my four-wheel drive to be filthy or spotless. Filthy means I've been away and I've had fun, but then soon after I want it to be spotless again. And I want to look after it and keep it in good condition. Ah, the joys of landscape photography. I must say, I do enjoy it, all of it. I especially love all the unknowns. You just don't know what you're gonna get. The place that I've come to actually is a place where retired racehorses go. Uh, it's called Living Legends, and it's a beautiful old property. Uh, it's actually the original um, homestead for the wooded areas that I've been exploring a lot over the last few months. It's actually part of the, the same property, but a lot of it was handed up. Well, I think all of it was handed over to uh, the National Trust many years ago. So it's, it's sort of a public park now. We all love the grand vistas, of course, but for most of us, it's just not practical to go searching for them all the time. They're usually very far away. And this is why you'll find a lot of my videos focus on plucking out interesting images from 
small areas within a landscape or specific elements of a landscape. And that's exactly what this little exercise was about. Hopefully you found it useful. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.